Now at five, we learn more about the man shot and killed by Portland police in Lens Park. Hear from a witness who spoke to Robert Douglas Delgado not long before the incident that led to his death. Also, a vaccination milestone in the U.S. Half of adults across the country now have at least one dose of the COVID shot. But vaccine hesitancy is growing as everyone 16 and older becomes eligible in Oregon Monday. Plus you feel like you're contributing to the end of this long, in many cases, painful experience. Teens taking the anxiety out of COVID vaccine appointments. How these local high schoolers can help you nab the jab. The news starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Brittany Folgers. We begin with new insight into the deadly police shooting in Lentz Park Friday. It started with a report of a man pointing a gun in the park. Today, Tim Gordon spoke with a witness who says he saw what happened when officers arrived. People have placed flowers at a memorial for Robert Douglas Delgado. Delgado is the man police came to check out in Lentz Park. It ended with both less lethal and lethal force used against the 46-year-old Portlander. Delgado died of a single gunshot. It's really tough because it happened all right next to me, right next to me, right next to my truck. David Hernandez videotaped the deadly ordeal. We're showing you just a little of the 11 minute clip to see his perspective. A few hours before the police confrontation, Hernandez says he and his partner were at the park and noticed a tent in the grass nearby. Then Delgado, who they did not know, came from the tent to visit. But he bumped a couple of cigarettes from us. Um, and we kicked it and shared a few moments of our life just talking. He seemed like a really cool guy. Um, he wasn't on drugs. He didn't smell like alcohol. At that time, Hernandez um, said he noticed Delgado had a gun, yeah, but that it wasn't loaded. Went, went Sources went have to told the Oregonian that police recovered a replica with an orange tip on it. The investigation is far from over. But family members described Delgado to the Oregonian as a sweet man who lived a troubled life, suffering from mental illness and substance abuse. Mental health advocates say more help is needed for those in crisis. As you have people who have both the mental health background uh, and the connections to the community, the connections to resources that you need to really contact people and figure out what it is they need to get them out of that place of crisis. Um, that's another thing that we'd really like to see funded. And then I really think housing is also an incredibly crucial component of it, too. Delgado was houseless, and so is David Hernandez, who has shared his video with police and expects to be called in as a witness. What I'm going to go there to do is tell them the exact truth. That's all I can do. The truth, as he saw it, of something he'll never forget. I spent a few moments of my life with this person to get to know him a little bit and interact and he's gone. It's tough. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Another night of protests ended with relative calm on Saturday, at least compared to Friday night's riot in downtown. Last night's protest was by the Portland Police East Precinct. About 70 people gathered. Police say some people took two dumpsters into the street. Officers then declared this an unlawful assembly. That seemed to quiet things down. Most of the crowd broke apart. Police did not make any arrests. Now an update on the pandemic and three things to know about coronavirus on this Sunday. Number one, Oregon reported 628 new cases and no new deaths today. Cases have, however, been on the rise recently. Number two, a big COVID vaccine milestone for Oregon. Tomorrow, all Oregonians 16 and older will be eligible for their shot. Washington made everyone 16 and older eligible this past Thursday. And number three, half of all U.S. adults have now received at least one COVID shot. That's according to the CDC. This covers 130 million people and is an important mark in the vaccination effort. Despite that milestone, there are still challenges ahead. Some people are resisting getting their shot, even though millions of them are currently available. It hasn't helped that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was temporarily halted because of rare but sometimes deadly blood clots developed in at least six people. The CDC will be meeting on Friday to discuss what's going on with that, but experts believe it will return to the market in some form. I doubt very seriously if they just cancel it. I don't think that's going to happen. 
I do think that there will likely be some sort of warning or restriction or risk assessment. In other vaccine news, both Pfizer and Moderna have said they believe a booster shot will be needed to protect against the virus. U.S. health officials say that decision will be made by the CDC and FDA later this year. Well, a group of high school students are helping Oregonians get connected with COVID vaccine appointments. Their new tool that launched just this week comes just in time for everyone 16 and older to be eligible starting tomorrow. Galen Etlin followed up with them. These high school students are part of the team for Portland Student Pandemic Response, which is a nonprofit that was built to give students a place to collaborate virtually in helping Portland and Oregon through the pandemic. The group has a new text line for Oregonians to find a COVID-19 vaccine appointment. And it checks it to the second, so you're always getting the most relevant data. The idea is easy access through your phone, getting as many people access to vaccine appointments as possible as everyone over 16 becomes eligible April 19th. So what are the steps? The first is texting the word vaccine to 850-367-7033. The second is checking your eligibility with the Oregon Health Authority link that will pop up after you text. And the third is entering a zip code, either your own or one near you, and a list of vaccine appointments will pop up. I would imagine this is also sort of a technical feat to put all of this together. When it came to that aspect of it, how did you make this technology work? So it's based off of a national open source coding program and adapted into text line format by Portland Student Pandemic Response members, which is super cool. Students from multiple schools in the Portland area have worked since last year to help people through the pandemic, from donating PPE to helping people find food assistance. High school students have a lot of power in what they can do. And when they are able to direct their energy into making an impact, it will happen and it'll happen at a pretty good scale. And for these soon to graduate seniors, they're working to pass the torch. Are you or a loved one looking to get vaccinated? These online training videos are for other students to become ambassadors, helping friends, family and community members get vaccination appointments. Students, um, once they finish this, will take a quiz. And if they pass, we will provide them with a little PSBR official um, vaccine ambassador certificate. Why would you say that this is a rewarding thing to be a part of during this moment in history? It allows you to have a way to help in seeing the light at the end of this tunnel. You, you feel like you're contributing to the end of this long, in many cases, painful experience. The text line costs a little money, so students are crowdsourcing it online and taking with them an important lesson. That individuals do have power to make a difference. Galen Etlin, KGW News. And as more people receive COVID vaccines, universities are getting ready for the fall semester. Seattle University now says all students will be required to get vaccinated before they can return to class. It's the biggest school in Washington to announce this requirement so far. The University of Washington has not made a decision yet. Washington State says it's considering it. I feel like if you're going to have a class in person, I think it should be a requirement for students and professors to be vaccinated. I think that just like makes the most sense. Universities say if they do mandate the COVID vaccine, they'll likely include exemptions for existing medical conditions and religious ob um, ob objections. The University of Oregon so far has said it strongly encourages getting the COVID vaccine, but has not required it yet. Oregon State has the same policy.